When I say plug-in hybrid, you probably don't think of a car with 357 horsepower. When you hear 76 miles per gallon electric and gasoline combined fuel economy, you won't expect 420 pound-feet of torque. When you learn that there's 33% less carbon dioxide coming out of the tailpipe of this car versus a Toyota Corolla, you probably aren't expecting a 0-60 to 60 time of 4.2 seconds. And when you see an exterior with styling this bold, this ambitious, you don't assume it'll ever make it into production. And that's really the story of the BMW i8. Don't create any expectations, because they're all going to be wrong. And that's a good thing. So what is the BMW i8? Well, it's a lot of things, and what's really cool about it is the driving experience changes dramatically depending on which of the four modes you choose to be driving in. So first off, there is E-Drive, and this is a purely electric mode, and so there's a 7.1 kilowatt hour battery on board, and this is good for 15 miles of electric only range, and this can bring you up to uh, 75 miles per hour. Now this is only driving the front wheels, so in E-Drive, this is a front wheel drive electric vehicle but it doesn't always have to be that. Put it into comfort and then the experience changes. And so now at this point, the engine is allowed to come on uh, whenever it wants and it can add power and the engine is only powering the rear wheels. And so in comfort mode, you're kind of combining the best of both worlds where you have efficiency when you're not really going for it and when you put your foot down, it's going to kick on that engine and provide you with more power. Then there is uh, Eco Pro mode, and so this is basically comfort mode, except you're going to minimize the amount of basically accessory usage of energy, so it'll optimize, for example, the climate control system so that you don't use too much energy from that, and you're basically going to be driving as efficiently as possible. So that's Eco Pro. And then finally, the most fun mode, and where this kind of transforms into a supercar, uh, is when you put it into sport mode. And this kicks on the three-cylinder engine which you just heard start up and now this vehicle is all-wheel drive so electric power getting sent to the front and then you've got the 1.5 liter uh, internal combustion engine driving the rear wheels the powertrain of this vehicle is pretty unique starting at the front there's a 129 horsepower electric motor sending power to the front wheels through a two-speed automatic transmission in the middle a 7.1 kilowatt high voltage lithium-ion battery rests between the driver and the passenger at the rear, a turbocharged inline three-cylinder produces 228 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque, propelling the rear wheels through a six-speed automatic transmission. The engine is also connected to an electric motor which is used as the starter and also used to charge the battery as a generator. Keeping in mind that there are two power plants, one electric and one gasoline, and two transmissions, depending on the circumstances, it's theoretically possible for the car to be front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive. And so when you combine the torque of an electric motor, which is instantaneous, uh, and then that turbocharged engine, when you put your foot down, you get immediate torque, and then it builds because of the turbo lag of the engine, so it builds up boost, and so you get immediate torque, you're slammed back in your seat, and then you continue to have that acceleration pull harder as that turbocharger spools up, and then you get the full power from the rear axle. It's a really cool experience, and it's pretty different than most of the cars I've ever driven, uh, just because of how instantaneous the torque is immediately and then it just continues to build and it has a really cool feeling to it and it pulls really hard now in sport mode you do have the ability to manually shift and actually this is a very fast shifting automatic transmission the six-speed automatic um, I would say equal to that ZF eight-speed uh, which I tested in the Jaguar F-Type and the Aston Martin Vanquish uh, it's extremely quick to shift gears sound it sounds great you know there is artificial noise being piped in here through the speakers or through wherever uh, to make you excited about what you're listening to if you ignore that fact uh, it does sound amazing in here you've got this nice whine from the electric motor and then you've got you know a throatiness uh, from the ICE and that downshift just sounds great pulls really hard strong brakes 
And so what it does, uh, what you'll notice on the display up front is this e-boost. So when you put your foot down, you get that electric boost uh, immediate. It also has uh, an electric motor in the rear attached with that engine, and that can help compensate uh, for the turbo lag so you get instant torque from the rear as well. Uh, and then, of course, once the turbo uh, spools up, you've got torque from uh, the engine powering it. So you've got all kinds of torque put down when you put your foot down, and it truly is a quick car. You know, for $150,000, are there faster cars out there? Yes, absolutely. But this is a very unique experience because of how it approaches uh, you know, this, this formula in order to be super efficient and really fun at the same time. In my own testing, I did 46 miles per gallon on my fuel economy test run. That's the best of any vehicle which I've tested, except for the Volkswagen Jetta TDI, which was of course cheating. Uh, you know, so theoretically, it is the most fuel efficient vehicle I've tested, uh, if you don't allow cheaters. And, you know, that's incredible. And that wasn't with a full battery charge. I just, you know, drove it once they delivered it to my house. So it had, you know, a decent amount of the charge, maybe 75% or so, uh, where it could still drive in the electric mode for a bit. But it wasn't fully charged, and I did it in comfort mode, not Eco Pro. And so it's even possible for it to do even better than that, even better than 46 miles per gallon. Uh, you know, and if you charge it every time from your house, you're going to get 15 or so miles without the engine ever kicking on if you don't want it to. And yet all the while, this thing can hit 60 in 4.2 seconds. I mean, it really does it all. It's fast and it's efficient. And so many people think that combination isn't possible. And here's BMW to prove everyone wrong. So the car is decently light, 3,455 pounds. And considering that you've got that big battery sitting between me and the passenger, and you've got the electric motors up front, it's all wheel drive, uh, you know, that's not too bad of a weight. And that weight is evenly distributed amongst the front and the rear. So you've got about a 50-50 split. Part of that thanks to the fact that this is a mid-engine design, and this helps keep it really agile. As far as the interior, it's actually really nice in here. And when you put it over into this comfort mode, you kind of forget that you're in a supercar. I mean, it's comfortable seats. It's a comfortable seating position. You've got plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel so your knees aren't coming into contact with it. You've got great visibility out the front and to the sides, which you don't always get in cars of this level. Uh, out the back is a little bit cramped uh, looking back there, but overall visibility in this is pretty good. I also do like the display up front. You know, it changes depending on which mode you're in and you've got all kinds of different information here on the main display to the right um, and so overall everything in here is fairly intuitive and pretty easy to use uh, you know my one complaint would be the climate control system and I've brought this up in many other cars but basically you have to keep pressing this button let's say you want the air blowing on your chest well scroll through you know six times or whatever and you can finally find the one uh, I don't think systems should be that difficult to find out how to get air to blow at your face um, you know I think it should be much more simple but you know that's just a small gripe and in the big scheme of things this interior is fantastic so coming into some corners the body does stay really flat ease onto the accelerator as you pull out. You actually don't notice a difference in the brake pedals between the electric regen and the disc brakes. Uh, nice progressive feel to the brake pedals. Car staying really flat. Easy to control. You don't notice any wheel slip when you throttle out on the corners. And it pulls once you get out there. <laughs> Man strong brakes you know the steering feel it is pretty light um, and it may not be the fastest responding there's probably some vehicles out there which have a little bit quicker response but overall it feels good and it feels easy to control in the corners there okay so we will test out the launch control no fancy combination you need to do all you do is turn off the traction control come to a stop hold your foot on the brake hold your foot on the gas let go of the brake and off you go. So we will see how well it does. And we've got great conditions today for once, which is nice, sunny and cool. Oh man, that pulls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is an awesome launch. That electric torque, I mean, it's just immediate. The second you let off the brake pedal, you're just getting launched. That felt phenomenal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the electric mode 
just to see. So we are on the highway doing 70 miles an hour in purely electric mode. So the only noise we hear comes from the wind and road itself. I'd say primarily you just hear a little bit of road noise, uh, not really much wind noise. And the maximum speed it can go in electric mode is 75. So let's see what happens. Ooh, we're doing 76. We've broken uh, the machine and gone past the theoretical limit. So it's saying topping out at 76. I also like that when you press the button, it automatically moves the gear shift over. So if you've got it in sport and then you put it into E-Drive or Comfort, it moves the lever right over. Now overall, how is the BMW i8? Well, if this is any indication of the future of supercars, it is something I am totally okay with. It's extremely fuel efficient, it's really fast, uh, and it's this perfect combination of both efficiency and fun to drive, which I absolutely love. Uh, this car is just immense. I mean, there's really nothing that I don't like about it. The two most minor things would be the climate control uh, and the fact that it has fake engine noise. But other than that, I mean, this thing is, you know, it's taking it to a different level. It's something that you don't look at and think, yes, that's going to go into production. And it's just amazing that a car like this exists. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.